face, but we don't necessarily share a common reality. And so somehow we need to build a bridge from the absence of awareness into an understanding of the frequency of those events. How do we do that? By asking questions. Questions like, what is it you're experiencing that I'm not aware of? That might impact your ability to make your maximum contribution to this team. What is it you're experiencing that I'm not aware of that may leave you feeling more excluded from the team dynamic than you would desire? What is it you're experiencing that may leave you with the impression you have to work twice as hard to get the same respect, the same recognition, the same rewards? Are those the questions that we're asking in this workplace? If not, perhaps they should become our go-to questions questions on the screen. What is it you're experiencing that may represent a barrier to you making your maximum contribution or leave you feeling more excluded from the team dynamic than you would desire or leave you with the impression that you may have to work twice as hard? What you ignore becomes more. What you tolerate will soon take over. But what you challenge will change. So the call to action is here. It's right here in front of us. What are we going to do differently to ensure that we're working toward creating a more inclusive experience? When someone addresses a barrier, it automatically helps to minimize that barrier. But if we don't address it, it can't get better. And it won't get better. If we don't create inclusion intentionally, we create exclusion by default. That, that, that's a fact of sociology, that we tend to gravitate toward our comfort zones. We tend to gravitate toward those who look like us, sound like us, dress like us, see the world the same way we do. That's comfort. But you'll hear me tell you that comfort can rob you of your competitive advantage. So anybody remember the science experiment, maybe around fifth grade or sixth grade, where you had to make a, uh, a volcano? Anybody remember that one? What, what were the active ingredients in that science experiment. What, what, what created that reaction? I heard it. Baking soda and vinegar. There is a sociological equivalent. It's called the social distance model. That when you bring people together from different backgrounds, whether the difference is real or perceived, there is a progression that you can expect. It looks like this. As differences go up, you'll find that the quality of the work relationship start to decline. When the quality of the work relationship decline, you'll find that resource utilization starts to fall off. We don't use all of our human capital to address the needs. We, we fall into the favorites or the go-to folk or the chosen one or the heir apparent, whatever the title. And by the way, here's what I've learned. It's hard to get good at what you don't practice. And so if we don't utilize all of that human resource, then there will be people on the team will, who will begin to differentiate themselves, not because they have better competence, but because they've had more opportunity. And as that happens, then we find that the level of engagement starts to fall off, organizational productivity suffers, and employee development suffers. This is as predictable as mixing baking soda and vinegar. Is it possible to have an inclusive environment and not have a diverse environment? Is it possible to have a diverse environment and not have an inclusive environment? The answer is yes. You see, think of diversity as a noun. People, place, thing. Think of inclusion coming from the verb to include. So where two or more are gathered together, there you will have diversity. That's a given. But how inclusive that experience is, is contingent upon what we do in the environment. Do you remember your high school cafeteria? What were the rules around who sat with whom in the cafeteria? See, in my high school, all the football players sat together. All the people who were involved in theater, they had an area. The people who were involved in automobile repair, they had an area. And the people who are always smoking marijuana, where, where did y'all hang out at? Oh, you said you got to remember. All right, so, no, just teasing. 
just because you have diversity does not mean that you have inclusion. Inclusion is about action. Take a look. The ways in which a person is perceived by others and how we welcome them into the environment. Helping them to have a sense of belonging. Being embraced and accepted as an integral part of the team. By the way, how much harder might you work for a leader who embraces you as a whole person instead of treating you like headcount? I have to reiterate, this is a business discussion, not social reengineering. What are some of the advantages of creating an inclusive work environment? How might it be advantageous for an organization to create a more inclusive environment? Share your best ideas with a discussion mate very quickly. Just share one. How might it be advantageous to an organization